All right, guys, so we are here at Koenig Knives, and we are sitting with the man himself, Bill Koenig, in Boise, Idaho. So, Bill, who are you? What do you do? Uh, so, my name is Bill Koenig, as Austin just said, and uh, we manufacture knives. All right, how old are you? I'm 23. When did you start the company? Uh, when I was 19. 19? Yeah. So, um, we're here in Boise. This is a shop. We'll go on a tour in just a second. But, Bill, tell us the story. How did Koenig Knives come about? Uh, so, in 2013, or actually uh, in December of 2012, um, I was sitting on the couch talking to my father actually about, uh, you know, dreams to start a knife company and one day we should do it. And uh, in January 18th of 2013, he passed away, a uh, massive heart attack. And uh, it's hard to talk about even to this day, um, but this is our dream. And after I graduated high school uh, in 2012, I, uh, you know, I was working at a mine up there, uh, mine money exploration company, and uh, anyways, uh, he passed away. Not long after that, I got laid off, and uh, so I went to North Dakota and went to the oil fields up there uh, to fund everything and make the dream happen. So uh, here we are, a few years later, and uh, everything's coming together pretty well. How many years did you work in the oil fields to start Koenig Knives? Uh, just shy of three. So you spent three years busting your ass in the oil fields to be able to generate the capital to start your company, right? Yeah. How, how'd the company start? Tell us the story. Uh, so originally, you know, after my father passed away, um, I formed the LLC and kind of did some research um, as to how to form the company and uh, from a legal aspect. Um, after the LLC formed in April of 2013, um, I proceeded forward, uh, you know, with looking at designers. Uh, I reached out to a friend I went to high school with, TJ uh, Shorts, and um, we developed the Atrox together, actually, uh, in a dorm room in BSU. So A little more detail on that. What what happened? So you're in the dorm room, you, you guys are just figuring things out, and then you had to buy a program, right? Yeah. So I bought SolidWorks. It was actually my first investment, um, and we still have it to this day. We design all of our knives in SolidWorks. Um, and so the first knife actually came to fruition in December of 2014. In a dorm room? So, yes. And so the first batch was released on uh, December of 2014. But when 13, you, sorry. When you buy SolidWorks, don't you have to have like a sales rep come by and they have to f sign forms and it's like a big oh, yeah. deal, right? How much yeah. does it cost? Uh, so I think it was $5,000 uh, for the software, and which I thought was an incredible amount of money at the time. And um, it was a big investment for me, um, but a worthy one. And so we, when we ordered it, we actually got it online, uh, talked to a sales rep, and he asked where he should deliver it to, and we tell him one of the dorm rooms at BSU, which is the local college here in Boise. So uh, he came by, delivered it, we signed for it, and uh, the rest was history from there. That was the beginning of the knife company. And so actually right near the end of December of 2013, we delivered the first batch of knives, which was the Atrox automatic switchblade. So... Um, and then that's not so long after that, we developed the uh, Zeneta, mm -hmm. which he designed, uh, which is a screwless design. Won a couple awards? Yeah, won the uh, most innovative American made knife of the year in 2014 at Blade Show. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a very limited run. Uh, there's probably only around 50 out there right now. Wow. So. Okay. And so initially when you guys started manufacturing, you were with a different company at first, right? Yeah. So we were using Millen Knives. Um, and about a year ago, we had a party of ways. Um, I don't want to get into the details of it, but um, we parted ways, and I got this shop going. Um, and actually, December of this last year, we took delivery of our first machine. Uh, before we went out to Blade Show um, in 2017, I ordered the second machine just to keep up with the demand. And um, it gives us the ability to prototype knives while we're running production as well. So you have two machines that you build most of the knives on. What does a machine like that cost? Uh, so they're anywhere. I think the starting price is sixty-eight thousand. Uh, that's just the bare bones model. Mm -hmm. uh, we got the probe and everything on it, so they're about seventy-five grand on average. Wow. Okay. So you've got the shop. You've got a rent. You've got employees. You've got some pretty expensive machines out there, right? Yeah. Is running a business like you thought it would be? I mean, what's? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a lot more than I had ever expected. Um, it seems like a. It's a. I don't know. It's a great experience. Um, very rewarding. Um, frustrating at the same time, mm -hmm. but uh, it's it's been a it's been a wild ride. So, awesome. Yeah, very awesome. exciting. 
What do you love most about it? Um, seeing something in SolidWorks as something that's, you know, not tangible, something you can't really feel or, I don't know, um, you know, really see in person um, other than, you know, the, the 3D modeling. And then to see that the first prototype come off the machine um, and, and hold something in your hand that was just in a, in a computer, you know, 10 minutes prior. So it's pretty incredible um, just to see the small parts come off, you know, if you do a, a clip, a machine clip, and to see it in, you know, uh, in a 3D modeling, and then all of a sudden it comes off the machine and you have a, a tangible piece. It's pretty incredible. Awesome. What's, what's coming up? What's the future of coding knives? Uh, so right now we have the Arius as our main production knife. Um, we have that fixed blade that we do uh, short runs on, sprint runs, uh, but our main uh, focus right now is the Arius. We have some other designs in the works uh, we'll be doing, and i um, pretty excited for that. Nice. Anything you want to talk about, or any timeline, or ETA? Um, I don't like to give any ETAs, so right now we're just focused on the areas. Um, we prefer to go through and perfect everything. Um, instead of just cranking out a bunch of designs, I want to make the design that we have now you know, as perfect as possible. Awesome. Um, man, I'd rather refine this one than just do new designs all the time, and um, just try to fill orders for this one before moving on to something else, but we'll keep production going uh, from time to time in the areas. Uh, it's a great knife, and um, it's really been refined nicely. Awesome. So all the knives are made here, Boise, U Boise Idaho. Yeah. Good yeah. old uh, Boise. Yeah. All it's, right. Uh, home of Chris Reeve as well. He's about 15 minutes away. I heard he's in Salt Lake right now. Yes, I'm here. He's in Salt Lake. Yeah, so ironic. I ironic. We so. swapped. Yeah. Awesome. So let's go to look out in the shop. Let's do it. So this is your office, right? Yeah. This is where the magic happens? It is. What's in the gun safe? Guns. All right. <laughs> we like that. So this is the assembly room. Um, I have a full-time assembler. Uh, he's not here right now because it's Sunday, obviously. But uh, You work Sundays? Uh, every day. <laughs> so, um, so this is his normal workbench. Um, everything starts out in the machine shop, but uh, this is where everything ends up. Nice. So... This is our shipping table, um, cluttered with some other stuff, including dog treats. All right, dog treats. Bill's been babysitting our baby. Oh, yeah. He's a, he's a little brat. So we got parts out here that have been prepped uh, before DLC coating. Um, everything's been blasted and inspected um, before it heads off to DLC coating in Oregon. Nice. Um, and let's see. Here's where I do a lot of the assembly work as well. Um, nothing special, but, uh, it works, so. Awesome. Here's some of the carbon fibers we're actually working on right now. Okay, do, do show. Oh, so. okay, let, that one looks nice. I mean, I'll, I'll take that home. I need to oil it up. Uh, I'll oil it. I take care of it. Don't you worry. So, this is a full, uh, carbon fiber with the DLC back. Looks good. Yeah. Okay. And that one's assembled, ready to go? Yeah. This one uh, doesn't have just, a home, huh? Nope, just needs an edge. Oh. Uh -huh. So. Who puts the edges on them? And that'd be me. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Let's. What's What's this office back here? So this is Krista's office. Who's Krista? Uh, she's my sister. She does all the CAD and design work. Okay. Uh, what is What is Krista hiding in all of these uh, containers back here? A lot of snakes. A lot of snakes. I yeah. approve. So we've got some uh, milk snakes back here. Yep, some king snakes. King snakes, milk snakes, all colubrids. So Krista has good taste in reptiles. Oh yeah. And here's where all the inventory is kept uh, for any knives. So anytime anything comes in and it's coated uh, or it's a uh, finished part, it'll get put in sleeves just like this. We'll have some DLC. These are actually some pattern handles. They're covered in oil, but uh, everything is sleeved and kept back here. Uh, until a work order is built. Once the work order is built, then everything is uh, put into trays and assembled from there. Awesome. So, here's here's Krista's workspace. Yep. Pretty fancy. Oh yeah. All right. Let's go. Uh, what you have a front office too, right? Yeah. What what happens in the front office out here? Oh, who knows? A lot of shenanigans. Okay. Now I got a couple buddies that help me out uh, from time to time. What do they do when they're here? Uh, they'll help answer emails and. Um, mostly screw off. But no. <laughs> and and get good. paid for it? Yeah. 
Okay. So there's the restroom. It's filthy, filthy, okay. filthy. No, I'm just kidding. All right, and here's where the magic happens. So what do we got going on out here? So we got both of the CNCs out here. Um, this is the original one right here. Mm -hmm. uh, I took delivery of this, like I said, in December of last year. Um, and it's done a, look, a lot of good work for us. It's been a great machine, been really happy with it. Uh, so much so that we picked up a second one over there. This is the latest one. They both have the probing system on them. What does that do? So the probing allows you to touch off on your work pieces. It allows you to um, set all your tools off so you can uh, load your tools up and then touch them off here. It'll measure the height of your tool. Um, and it's very convenient because you can walk away while it's touching off all your tools for your next job. Uh, it saves a lot of time. And by touching off, you mean it'll switch the tools for you? Yes, it'll, sw it'll touch off, uh, basically calibrating where the, the tool is uh, in the tool holder and how long the tool is. Mm. Uh, so then when you set up on your workpiece, uh, you can machine everything that you need. It'll know uh, where the tool is at in relation to the part that it's machining. All right. So That sounds interesting. I don't know that I understood most of it, but that's okay. Um, and these are the pallets that we're running now. So we're running everything on pallets. It's actually covered in oil. That's all right. Um, There. What's really convenient about this is uh, you can be loading up parts outside the machine while the machine is running. So you'll have approximately 30 to 45 seconds of downtime um, before you can get that next pallet in there. So basically what that allows us to do is just keep these doors closed and keep parts on the machine mm -hmm. instead of having to keep these doors open and loaded on and off. So I'll actually show you when this machine starts up. But we can pull this pallet right off. Um, and there's a second pallet. Over, I think it's over there on the shelf, actually. Um, and we can be swapping parts. So we have pallets, so we can machine handles on both machines at the same time. So we have four pallets for the handles, four pallets for the blades. Nice. So What else we got going on in the shop here? What are the other workstations? Uh, so um, we got... The, uh, belt grinders over here. Uh, this is my personal favorite. This is from Travis Wirtz. Uh, Wirtz Machine Works. Okay. Uh, he makes a TW90, which is an incredible belt grinder. Um, and we have this one over here. This is an older one. Um, it's a KMG belt grinder. It's kind of the workhorse. But uh, this one's mine. Nobody touches it. Nice. All right. Since uh, the, the sandblaster over here. This is where all the parts are uh, bead blasted. This is where all the parts are bead blasted uh, or sand blasted, uh, depending on the type of finish we're trying to achieve. Um, over here we have the surface grinder. This is a 12 by 24, which is the size of the table, 12 inches by 24 inches. Um, when we get our sheets of material in, we have them water jet out on the blades. We'll actually surface grind all the material down so the part is flat, which takes off, uh, you know, all the scale and everything on the outside of the blade. Um, so all the blades are done right here in-house. Our handles, after they're cut, they are all double disced up in Washington by Larkin, actually. So uh, when we get them back, and they go back on the machine. Awesome. So, and awesome. all the locks are cut on here. This is actually what it's said to do right now. So this thing's actually hydraulic. Um, Blade up on here, so we cut all of our locks uh, for the final. You can turn that heater off if you want. So on the final fitment, when we're fitting the lock on each knife, we load the the blade onto this fixture here. Set at uh, eight and a half degrees. Normally, there's a stop in the, in the blade that's pressed in. These obviously don't have it, uh, and then there's a screw that locks it in place. And all of our locks are cut directly on the surface grinder. Nice. So, and okay. we also have a fixture that cuts our inserts at a one and a half degree angle. Um, and so that fixture will go on there. We cut all of our blades at the same length. All of our uh, all of our locks on our blades. Then we put the inserts to each knife. Awesome. 
Uh, anything else you want people to know about Koenig knives? Um, got a lot of exciting stuff in the works. Um, we will take our time to make sure it's done right, and, um, but we're looking forward to introducing some new models. Cool. And where can people find you? Uh, so we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook. Uh, our dealers are Blade HQ, Fanatic Edge. Uh, we got Knife Center. I'm sure I don't forget it here. Who else do we have? Uh, oh, there's quite a few more. They're on the website if you want to check out the website. And what's the website? Uh, it is www.coningknives.com. All right, so, so just follow that link that's on his hat essentially and yep. you'll find it. Here's the 